Welcome to NOLA Gent. Let the good times roll. So it's carnival time here in New Orleans, and I'm meeting a group of friends at Crescent City Steaks tonight. Crescent City Steaks is in the Mid City neighborhood at 1001 North Broad Street, and it's about a little over two miles from the French Quarter. So let's head there now. Crescent City Steakhouse, a fantastic place to eat delicious meat. It's going to be a good time tonight. So when you visit old New Orleans restaurants, it's really important to notice all the small little architectural details outside that sometimes can add a little extra, uh, especially when you look and see some of the tile work they have. So always pay attention to some of that. It makes everything a little more special sometimes. Well, let's head on inside. Hello, gentlemen. Now on to the hard decisions of the night. So here's the menu with many delicious choices. So we see it's the 85th anniversary from 1934 to 2019. But since it's just now 2020, it's actually their 86th anniversary. So I'm in a steak mood tonight. So the selections are a filet wrapped in bacon, a ribeye, porterhouse for two, extra cut filet, strip sirloin, T-bone, porterhouse for three, extra cut ribeye. So what to choose? Tonight, I think it will be the ribeye. I've also always been impressed with the sheer number of ways they prepare potatoes at Crescent City Steakhouse. They have a selection of seven types of potatoes. You have au gratin, french fries, German fries, lyonnaise, brabant, cottage fries, and shoestrings, all in potatoes. Now, turning the page in the menu, we see they have a nice history of the restaurant here. So, in 1923, at the age of 15, John Vojkovic left his village of Sucre on the island of Havar for New Orleans. He hoped to go to school when he arrived in New Orleans. But his father told him they both needed to work to save money to bring his mother and sisters to America. So it was off to Plaquemines Parish to join his fellow Croatians working on an oyster boat. He lasted two months. As he said later, the mosquitoes were too much for him. So he headed back to New Orleans, found a room at the boarding house in the French Quarter, and went to work. He worked in a few different restaurants downtown, moving from dishwasher to busboy to waiter, and eventually managing a restaurant at the corner of North Rampart and St. Philip Street. The restaurant business had gotten into his blood. In 1932, at the age of 24, he purchased the building at the present location of Crescent City Steakhouse. He opened for business in 1934, and we've been here ever since. He decided to keep the menu simple and only offer steaks, but not just any steak, only the best. USDA Prime Aged Beef from Chicago. His was the first steakhouse to bring prime beef to New Orleans. But most importantly, he was the originator of serving steaks sizzling in butter, for which there have been many imitators and which has become the signature New Orleans style of cooking steaks. John passed away in 1990 but the restaurant is still owned by the Vojkovic family. Crescent City Steakhouse is the oldest family-owned steakhouse in Louisiana. In five and six generations of families have patronized this popular establishment. A gentleman celebrated his 70th birthday at the restaurant and announced that he has been eating here since he was 10 years old. Even though Hurricane Katrina caused us to close temporarily due to flooding, there was never a doubt that Crescent City would be back. We are proud to have been part of the rebuilding of New Orleans. So that's a really great, interesting story about the history and background of the restaurant. And if we look at the last page of the menu, we get to see some more specials that they offer. 
the Chateaubriand for two, uh, the Cowboy Ribeye, the Broiled Lobster Tail, Surf and Turf, Redfish Amadine, and a Broiled Salmon. So those are all really great choices as well. Now, getting back to some interesting features of Crescent City Steaks, you'll notice that they have some interesting dining booth areas with uh, some very private looking uh, separation areas and uh, what looks like a curtain that would be able to be pulled shut so that you can go and have more private dining, which that is exactly what that looks like. And you can actually get a very private dining booth experience with the curtains to be pulled. So the old New Orleans myth, story and legend about the private dining rooms is they are a remnant from back when the mafia controlled New Orleans. And whenever they needed to have a secret meeting, they would meet to dine here and close the curtains to keep everything secret. If that's true or not, you decide. Well, let's get back to the table for a drink. Now notice, one of my friends has a white formal tie on like myself, and the other one has a normal necktie. Well, we do need to get back to focusing on our meal for the night, and uh, we have decided on an onion ring appetizer to start out with, which is always a good thing to have, and many steak restaurants in New Orleans do tend to offer that uh, rather delicious beginning. Mmm. Dinner has arrived and the steaks are looking quite delicious and the sides are looking quite nice as well. My ribeye is a very large and delicious piece of very wonderful looking meat. Both of my friends opted for the filet wrapped in bacon and those steaks truly do look beautiful. Sadly, all good things come to an end, and we finished off our steak dinner with great delight. And we did have to hurry up and be at an event soon after. Finishing our meal, I had to reflect back on past enjoyable times I've had at Crescent City Steaks. And I have to say that still my favorite thing here is the Chateaubriand for two, which Sometimes I can eat the entire thing by myself. And it's also a great value, as it also includes the sides and the sauce along with it, which makes it a very nice option when you need something filling and delicious. The cowboy ribeye is also a big winner here. And that certainly is another highly recommended item that will fill the large appetites when such need does arise. The T-bone here also is consistently a good choice and also another large piece of meat for those times when you don't want quite as much as the cowboy ribeye. The sides also are pretty consistently good here and the varied amount of potatoes is also quite a unique feature to experience here. Snapping out of my meat coma and back into reality, it was time for everyone's least favorite moment of the evening. And so the check arrived. And the damage before tip was only $160.90. Split between three people isn't that terrible and actually is a pretty good value considering the quality of the meal, and the good company and cheer that were had by all. Crescent City Steakhouse, good times to be had by all in here. Fun times and happy, delicious steaks. So, thanks for taking this moment to have a brief little visit at Crescent City Steaks with me. And uh, also, the drink of the night was an old-fashioned. So, just so you know... How to make a good old fashioned, we'll give you a quick recipe. So, the New Orleans word of the day will be lagnap, which means a little something extra or a little gift. It's still commonly used in restaurants frequently when they give you a little small sampling or appetizer of a little something extra to try out. So, look out for that if you're ever in town and want to know what that means when they give you that little something extra. 
So my lanyard to you is the recipe right here for the old fashioned. For our old fashioned, we're going to need uh, one sugar cube or simple syrup. Uh, I usually find that simple syrup works better. Uh, two fluid ounces or so to taste of a bourbon rye or a blended whiskey. One teaspoon water and three dashes bitters. Ice cubes to your preference and garnish with an orange pill. You pour the simple syrup or the sugar cube, water, and bitters into a whiskey glass, stir to combine, then place ice cubes in the glass. Pour the bourbon over the ice and garnish with the orange slice. Enjoy. Now, one last thing before you all leave. If you recall, I'd ask you to pay attention to my friend's ties earlier. So once again, just to review. So notice one wearing a white formal bow tie like I myself am and the other one wearing a normal necktie. So to solve this mystery is a little bit of a Mardi Gras mystery, and we will answer your questions about that in our next episode. Secrets of Mardi Gras balls and carnival balls. So click the link below to see this episode and learn the answer to the questions. If you would like to follow me on Yelp, I have thousands of pictures and reviews on there. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram for more photos. And please like this video and subscribe to the NOLA Jet channel. We would also love it if you would help us out on Patreon and help the channel continue to uh, have more content produced. Thank you very much.